I am Maha Elbirani. I grew up here in London, Ontario from the age of two until 25. I now work in humanitarian aid with Syrian refugees in Lebanon. I am a domestic homicide survivor, at least that's what the journal articles call me. And I will be sharing with you some insights on an immigrant's perspective and experience with language, cultural, and other barriers that make it more difficult to report domestic violence and access services. This is my dear and sweet mama, Sonia. She was murdered by my father in April 2012 after 29 years of oppression and abuse. I would like to introduce you to mama by quoting my older sister. Mama was beautiful inside and out. Her eyes were the color of emerald jewels, and they sparkled through all the pain they carried. Her skin was so soft, and her hands were so elegantly beautiful. She was a teacher early in her career, and later went back to college part-time while working full-time to get a diploma in early childhood education at the age of 49. She then shifted careers and became a daycare worker, helping many mothers to raise their young children. Six months before she was killed, she, be she began a job with the London Middlesex Health Unit as a family home visitor. She would work with a newly arrived family into Canada that needed help finding resources, maybe a new mother feeling overwhelmed, needing a helping hand or some encouragement and guidance. Sadly, she was not able to do this for long. She was strong yet delicate, confident yet so humble, kind and so, so wise. She was a loving daughter, mo sister, mother, grandmother, teacher, and caregiver. She was so much to so many people. She was my best friend and my hero. In 1999, Mama took us to live in Lebanon for two years. My father stayed behind in Canada. If he left, he wouldn't be eligible for his disability compensation that he was receiving. We lived in a small village for those two years. We connected to our heritage, language, community, and country. When we returned to Canada in 2001, my father's behavior was extremely controlling and erratic. He would have many bad days where he would control what we did. We would turn the home phone ringer off to silent, and we would hope no one would randomly stop by. He wouldn't allow mama to work and controlled our spending and lives. We weren't, my sister and I weren't allowed to join any extracurricular activities at school. He would sometimes cause scenes or display this behavior in front of his siblings or other members of the community, and then we would be held accountable by the community. My aunt would come to ask me, why, why did your father do that? We started to isolate ourselves. We would feel dread at any community event. What if he embarrasses again, embarrasses us again? The community also started to leave us out of things. Our uncles would rent a hall and have a gathering to celebrate Eid, or to go for the day to Niagara Falls, or. Canada's wonderland and not invite us. If our relatives from out west or from Lebanon came to visit, they, they would not inform us. So again, we made the best of our situation. We continued our we can do this attitude, surviving and waiting until he would change, disappear, or die. Two years before the murder, my father had tried to break mama's neck. My sister and I pulled him off of her. We called our uncles for help as they had expressed we, that they wished we would have done that instead of calling the police in 2005. And they sent their sister to our home to tell us that they did not want to get involved. As my aunt left, my sister told her, if they did not help us, someone would leave our house in a body bag, and it would probably be mama. She asked my uncles to meet with her later in the week, but they stood her up. My father had always been unemployed, and mama, my sister, and I always worked to support the household. Was it fair that we have to leave our home because he was a horrible person? I used to try to think of ways to make him leave. My head would hurt trying to think of a solution. None of the solutions were fair. Should my parents get divorced? Should we go to a women's shelter? Should we all move out and leave him? Would he follow us? All of the solutions I could think of resulted in us giving up everything and still living in fear. I want to mention here the option of divorce. While it's permissible in our religion to divorce, culturally it's shameful. A girl from a broken home will have more difficulties getting married, and this is an important part of traditional societies. So this was a major cultural barrier to us leaving. My father had a therapist he saw monthly or quarterly for over a decade. He was diagnosed with clinical depression and needed to see the therapist to get prescriptions for his medications. A few weeks before the murder, mama called the therapist to tell him that things were getting bad in our home and asked him if he was getting any indication of other issues my father may have been having. He told her that my father never spoke at his sessions. He would remain silent for the hour, take his prescription, and leave. I wonder where was his due diligence. The therapist told mama, 
if he ever gets violent, just call the police. But what if he was too violent, and what if it was too late to call the police? In April 2012, our worst fear was realized. He was too violent. And when my sister and I returned home from our friends on the night of the 11th, it was too late. Mama was by the door, stabbed 25 times, and bled out to death. I hope that sharing my experience with you shines a new light on how to work with and help families in similar situations as ours. The situation is very complex, and culture and background is a very important aspect to be sensitive to. In the words of the justice that sentenced my father to 25 years in prison for the crime of second degree murder, you have every right to be angry. Anger is not necessarily a negative emotion. We need anger to make sure we defend those who are defenseless. We need anger to motivate us to change people's impressions of domestic violence and to end complacency. So anger, hang on to it, but make it a good anger, make it a positive anger. Thank you.